We have the pleasure of welcoming Kevin Hodge to Anything Cricket. Let's talk. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you very much. For those who don't really know, Kevin and I go back to a brief stint in my career when I was a cricket umpire, and he was here for the West Indies under 19, and we've kept in contact ever since then, and I've noted his progress, and I'm proud to say you've been doing a good job. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wayne, I'm sure you've been following him as well, and you'd love to grill him with a few questions for anything cricket. Let's talk. Well, not, there's not, no grilling involved here whatsoever. I would like to uh, uh, congratulate uh, Kevin on the advances that he has made in his career. Uh, we all know he's now an established first-class player with the Windward Islands Volcanoes. He's also had experience with the West Indies representative sides at the various age group levels and also at the 18 level and uh, and then uh, um, the before that with the CCC uh, in, in regional competition so here's congratulating him on, on, on those advances that he has made in his cricketing career which seems to be going from strength to strength yeah Kevin and uh, partly if if we delve into your last season. Can you tell us about some of the performances yeah. that you managed to accomplish last season? Uh, just a, a few of them would probably be you know, the five half centuries that I scored. Um, it's just unfortunate that um, you know, my conversion was not where I wanted it to be. So obviously, you know, a lot of people, a lot of batsmen score half centuries, but obviously to separate um, you know, the top players from the ordinary, you want to score centuries. Um, so obviously, you know, moving on to next season, that's something that I'm looking to, you know, to improve on. Uh, also, uh, taking 30 wickets, um, which is which was the, the second most for the Volcanoes, uh, was a big achievement for me. Uh, it was uh, really unfortunate that Shane got um, banned halfway through the season. So it really meant that I had to step up with the ball, and you know, I was quite satisfied with what I was able to achieve. Well, because I was hearing you talking about your batting exploits, but we know that you have the all-round ability with the slow bowling, and you're not a slouch in the field either. Yeah, fielding is something that I really enjoy. Um, so the last season, I really took um, I took to the gully position, and you know, I tried my best to make it my own. So uh, it worked out pretty well. I took most of the catches that, that came there. So you know, just look to improve there and, and help out as much as I can in the outfield. And Wayne was telling me that you just recently returned from our West Indies training camp. Yeah, it was a high performance camp, basically, with the coaches around. It was held by some of the top coaches in the Caribbean. So um, there was a coach for each aspect. Uh, so we had Andre Coley was the fielding coach, Andrew Richardson was the bowling coach, and Graham West and Crandon was dealing with the batting, and then we had um, Gregory Seal, who was dealing with the strength and conditioning aspect of the, the coaching. Well, you don't look much worn out from a, a camp that seemed to be very comprehensive. Uh, how was it really? You told me about the aspects, but what um, was it like? It, well, to be honest, I've been back a couple of weeks now, but it was really intense. Um, they really tried to you know, work on a lot of specific stuff um, within those two weeks. But basically, it was just to get a general idea of where we are, our strengths, our weaknesses. Um, before the camps actually started, we had a one-to-one -one with each of the coaches you know, just trying to figure out, you know, where we are, what we consider our strength or weaknesses, and, you know, what are the ways or what are the objectives we look to achieve uh, during the camp. And then it just worked around that. And, you know, we had a couple of tests, you know, as the, as the camp went along, and then we had a couple of review sessions and stuff like that. But it was really good. Um, for me personally, um, I didn't go into the camp uh, with a specific goal saying, hey, I want to you know, be able to hit the ball like this or do this with the ball or stuff like that. Uh, for me, it was just about adding knowledge, general knowledge to what um, I already know, um, which includes all, you know, three facets of the game, bowling, batting, fielding, uh, just to improve my overall game. Um, and it worked really well. You know, I, I got a lot of information uh, in the fielding, in my bowling, so, subtle variations and, you know, ways that I can improve my physical um, condition you know, when it comes to strength and conditioning. So, you know, I walked away for a lot. And as far as the various formats are concerned, was there any concentration, though, on um, exploiting your skills for the, for the differing formats, or it was just a general uh, a cricket coaching setup? No, I think it was focused more on red ball cricket. Um, 
I think previously there was a there was a camp for the emerging players that are going off to the CPL. Um, so that was focused around white ball, but this camp was generally a red ball camp, you know, a longer version of the game. In talking about um, the, the, uh, the different formats, though, uh, your exploits would suggest that you obviously would regard yourself as an all formats player. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think what I do, you know, bowling and batting, you know, it, it, um, I fall easy to, easily into each of these aspects. Um, but generally, you know, I prefer. Uh, the longer version, because I believe you know that's where, you know, you really test your skills mentally, physically, um, technique, and because if you look at international cricket, all the, the great T20 players, um, 50 over players, they're exceptional in Test cricket. So uh, for me, that's you know where I look to make my aim. But you know wherever that I start, you know I'll accept gladly. Well, we've also seen the emergence of a number of young talented cricketers uh, through the, the the medium of the T20. Do you think that uh, it is the, the perfect training ground though for, uh, for young players? Um, I think, to be honest, anywhere that they can get a start into international cricket would be you know, beneficial. But I, what I realize that a lot of the international teams, that they're blooding their young players you know, from the shorter version into the longer version. Because I guess you know, they don't want to just throw them into the deep end you know, without having a taste of what international cricket so most of the guys you know, have a taste of T20 cricket, um, then 50 over, and then you know the really good ones you know filter into Test cricket. So I guess there are various ways of doing it, but you know that's the format most of the teams are using. And the skills employed, uh, what are the differences though that you find? I guess in the longer version of the game, you look to spin the ball a lot more. Mm -hmm. You look to 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 be a more attacking. Mm -hmm. um, and in the T20 and the one day game. I'm just imagining yeah. that you may want to be a bit tighter mm -hmm. uh, than, than you would be, uh, to, to be to be more economical, let's right. put it that way. Yeah. Um, what are the different skills uh, you would need to employ? I think in, in the longer version, you have a bit more time. Um, you can work out batsmen and, you know, play mind games. Um, you know, figure out, you know, what are they strong at, what are they weak at, and, you know, spend time working away. Uh, your craft, um, like I said, spinning the ball is is a, a very um, important thing to do. Whereas in T20 cricket, you more, you know, you try to be tight. You try to outthink the batsman uh, one step ahead. Whereas in you know red ball cricket, you know you can be a bit more relaxed. You know, be a bit more um, reactive. But in white ball cricket, you have to be proactive. You say, all right, um, this is what he's looking to do. All right, I'm going to try and do this instead, or you know, limit his scoring from there. And just try and create pressure. I think it's all about creating pressure and keeping it simple because you don't want to um, overcomplicate things so you keep it simple create pressure and then you know hopefully the basketball makes a mistake and you have also been one of these spinners who, who has been trusted mm. with the new ball quite a lot the uh, spin bowling uh, and the new ball is becoming a feature uh, of cricket nowadays uh, have you specifically um, set out to, to develop your game around uh, bowling the, the new ball uh no actually um i think we were just at practice one day for for you a couple of years ago, and you know Floyd just decided, you know, all right, Oji, um, you know, take up this new ball and just, you know, ball, just to bowl wicket to wicket, um, just don't leave the stump. But uh, you know, in doing that, obviously, I developed um, holding the ball in a certain way that it would swing when I release it. So I just kept practicing that, and then you know, it it fell out well for the team. So it's just something that I kept on doing, and uh, so it you know moved on into the CPL. It's something that you know worked well for me. Yeah. How much of an impact and influence has Floyd Reefer, the current West Indies coach, mm -hmm. been on your progress and career? Uh, he's had a, a major influence. Um, I think he's a person that um, instills confidence into you. Um, you know, I think he, he plays a lot of emphasis on the mental aspect of the game. Um, coming to you, I had a lot of, of talent. But obviously, that's one thing. Um, but I wasn't you know, transforming you know, that talent into good performances. So, you know, he recommended, you know, hey, reading some books, um, you know, being confident, stuff like that, you know, find, motivating yourself. And that's something he does really well. You know, he finds a way to motivate players, you know, get inside their head and say, hey, come on, you know, you should try this and, you know, work at this. And, you know, it's something that I took to, you know, reading a lot of books and... Um, Stick a pin. You mean you weren't in a net, you weren't on the field, you actually did theoretical stuff, reading books about cricket? 
Yeah, not only not only about cricket, but um, about the mental aspect of the game. You know, mental toughness, mental strength. You know, motivation. You know, getting through tough situations. So it, yeah, I, I spend a lot of time in the nets, um, bowling, batting, and stuff, and also feeling in the outfield. But I think I got that edge. Um, you know, paying a lot of attention to the mental aspect of it. I'm going to ask the question: Which came first, the studying or the cricket? <laughs> um, I think it was it was a balance. Um, it, it it was a tough balance to be honest. Cause obviously, the schedule you know is always something that is something you have to pay a lot of attention to. So, for example, my my daily routine or schedule would be like we would have six gym sets, six thirty in the morning or seven. I'm a morning person, so my gym sessions would be fairly early, and then from like ten o'clock we would have. Um, team sessions, 10 to like 12 team sessions, batting, bowling, fielding. And then most of my classes would be scheduled in the evening time. So obviously, you know, have to make time to, you know, prepare and then get to class. And then, you know, in the evening, you have studies, uh, prepare for exams like any other student. But um, I think, to be honest, cricket took a lot of time, but obviously you had to make time for, for studies. And then obviously on weekends, you had cricket. So yeah, like I said, cricket takes a lot of time, but obviously you have to be aware that, you know, hey, and also, as a student athlete, we have to maintain a certain GPA. So if we fall below that, then you know you, you run the risk of being evicted and stuff like that. You know, so you have to maintain uh, the grade point average that is required. So, like I said, you still have to put in the work um, at school. Uh, what is your course of study? Uh, kinesiology, uh, sports uh, science. I, I, well, yes, uh, could you um, be a bit more <laughs> explanatory for, 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 for the average layman like myself? Yeah, um, so it's basically um, the study of the, the body, um, human movement, um, but the degree itself entails a, a lot of different specifics uh, such as um, um, nutrition, um, human physiology, uh, anatomy, and it also goes into the business aspect of um, sports marketing, sports management, also sports psychology. So it's, it's basically a, a broad, you know, and it's all focused around sport. The, the degrees focus around sport. So um, a lot of this stuff that I did in the classroom, for example, like um, strength and conditioning, um, human physiology, I could, and also nutrition, I could filter that directly into my game, you know, so I learned something in the classroom, I say, oh, this is that. And I could, you know, practice it, you know, put it into my daily habits and stuff like that. Life after cricket, mm -hmm. how important uh, do you see it as being preparing yourself for life after cricket and um, of course your area of study, uh, where could you see it leading you? Yeah, that's, that's um, something that's very important. Um, I think obviously being at the university and balancing school and cricket at the same time, I think that's one of the things that prepare you for life after cricket. So, you know, earlier I mentioned the schedule that we had. Um, so I think, you know, obviously, you know, growing up, having your family, having your home, you have to deal with all these sort of things, you know, you know work, family, um, you have to go out, pay bills, groceries, all these sort of things. So it just, you know, it helps instill the discipline of managing your time. That's very important. Um, time management, um, being disciplined. Sometimes you might not feel to do something, but is what required at the moment. So um, obviously for me, you, using this good degree, um, I'm looking into to go into uh, strength and conditioning, you know, physiotherapy. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. Well, obviously, right now, you know, I just want to have to go out, pay bills, groceries, all these sort of things. So it just, you know, it helps instill the discipline of managing your time. That's very important. Um, time management, um, being disciplined. Sometimes you might not feel to do something, but is what required at the moment. So um, obviously, for me, you, using this good degree. Um, I'm looking into to go into um, strength and conditioning, you know, physiotherapy. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. Well, obviously, right now, you know, I just want to, you know, get further into cricket and then, you know, see where that leads.